Hello, everybody. It is Rachel Jensen here, and it looks like we are right on the hour. So we are going to get started. Now, if you've been on a webinar with me before, you know that what you want to do is find the questions and answers section of the control panel, because what we're going to do is have you type in where it is that you are calling in from. We get participants from all around the world, and who knows, maybe there's somebody who is in the town right next to you who may be calling in as well. So let us know where it is that you are calling in from, and from there, we will read those out loud. And you should just see the Q&A section, and I see a couple of you have found it so far, so perfect. Just type where it is that you're calling in from. Okay, we have James K. from Cocoa Beach, Florida, Michael P. from Oakville, Canada, John N. from The Colony, Texas, Michael C. from Dallas, Texas. I don't know where the colony is in relation to Dallas, but maybe they're close. We had David L. who's calling in from Mesa, Arizona. We have Joe P. who's calling in from Houston, Texas. Michelle from Washington, D.C. Kyle F. from Boise. We have an Amanda L. from Mount Vernon. We have Lauren from Sarasota. Jim from Sacramento. Stephanie from Denver. Charlotte from Mississippi, Matthew N. from Portland, Maine. And if you're just joining us there, what you're going to do, and you probably caught on, is type into the Q&A section where it is you're calling in from. We have Todd R. from Milwaukee, James S. from Valrico, and it says, James says I have a bad echo. Um, if anybody else is getting a bad echo, let me know and just type that in. I may end up taking out these headphones here if that'll get better. Ron R. from Columbus, Mississippi. Michael C. from Carrollton, which is right next to Colony. Imagine that. Brent from Austin, Texas. Jim I. from Santa Cruz, California. Um, Jacques R. from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Bob from Mineo. I don't know where Mineo is. Sorry about that, Bob. We have Clifford from Rudioso, New Mexico. Brian from Burlington, Vermont. Brian S. from North Dakota. Robert from Minnesota. Uh, David, thank you. It says no echo. James, no echo. Michael, sounds perfect. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Diana S. from Port St. Lucie. Awesome. We have really good representation today. And that is actually one of my favorite parts of the presentation because we tend to have folks who are calling in from all over. And it looks like we just had one attendee, James. Uh, if, if there's anything, James, uh, that you want to type out, feel free to put into the Q&A section. It looks like you raised your hand there and we'll be able to get that answered for you. So thank you everybody for joining us on the webinar. We are recording this session, so this will be sent to you afterwards if there's anything that you wanted to look back on, or if there is anything that, oh, perfect, James said it's good, perfect, thank you, James. Or if there's anything that you wanted to pass along to friends and family. I know sometimes when you're looking at making a real estate purchase overseas, you know, there may be more people than just you involved. So because it is recorded, we'll send that to you and you can get them on the line with us as well. So we are really excited to share this opportunity with you. I think it's one of the most exciting that's being offered in Belize right now, specifically on Ambergris Key, because there is a big branding announcement that is coming. Many of you, I'm going through the list here, and many of you have heard about us through Live and Invest Overseas. You got the email that Leaf sent out today, yesterday, uh, and you wanna understand more before the big branding announcement comes next week. For those of you who came through other means through live and invest other other means than live and invest overseas, I thank you for your interest in learning more about the fleet building at Grand Bayman's Gardens. Again, a huge opportunity for you, and you're really coming in at the right time, and we'll explain why in a second. So with me today, I have a special guest, Mike Cobb. Are you there, Mike? I am. Can you hear me okay? Uh, a little bit low from my end, but I think that's just because my volume is low. All right, let's try it again, Mike. How's that? Hey, hello, everybody. Perfect. perfect, perfect. Thank you. So uh, for those of you who do not know Mike Cobb, he is the CEO and co-founder of ECI Development, who is the development company that is developing the Grand Bayman property in Belize. Mike is a visionary. He sees opportunity, jumps on it, and really understands the market as he's creating the opportunities there. So Mike is going to talk to us a little bit about what we're gonna see in the presentation today and why Belize at this time right now is a great time for you to get involved. So during this session, we're gonna talk about how you can own a branded hotel suite on Ambergris Key for under $100,000 turnkey, turnkey. And for those of you who've been following us as ECI development as a whole, 
you know that we already have the Brandon Marriott property on the beachfront. And those, those condos start at about $400,000 plus closing costs and furniture. So to be able to get in at a branded hotel under $100,000 really is unheard of, especially here on Ambergris. But Mike, why don't you cover for us, uh, well, number one, give us a little bit more of your story. And then from there, talk to us about the three big points about why people should be looking at this opportunity right now. Well, sure. And, and thank you, Rachel. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. You know, uh, I, I heard many of you came in through, uh, through Kathy Petticord, and, 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 and that's great. I mean, Kathy and I have been friends and colleagues for about 24 years now since I, I started the company back in uh, 1996 uh, and, and was speaking at her conferences starting in 1997, you know, on. And, and you know, one of the things that she has really uh, paid attention to very, very closely is track record and experience. And, you know, I think that's one of the reasons that she is excited about this, this, uh, uh, this project. And, and, you know, I think quite honestly, uh, has gotten behind it the way she has. Um, you know, again, with, with that kind of a relationship, we both know each other very well. We know each other's experiences. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been around a while. 24 years of doing business in Latin America is, is a long time. And, and we've seen some great times and we've seen some absolutely miserable times. If, if, if any of you were in the real estate business in 2008, 2009, you know it was, uh, I mean, it was, it was brutal. It was ugly. And, and, you know, and, and, and many, many, many of our competitors that were around in 2004, 5, 6, 7 uh, uh, just simply don't exist anymore. Uh, you know, we, we've taken a very conservative approach. Uh, we, we take the slow approach. Uh, I think a lot of times people can race out and get ahead of themselves. We have always just been very methodical and, and, and prudent and cautious. Uh, and, and in this case, uh, here, this is a great example of where prudence and caution pays off. Uh, over the last six years, we've developed and we've built, developed, sold, and, and handed keys uh, to 54 condo owners in our Bayman Gardens. It's a property that's about three blocks off the water on Ambergus Key. And, uh, uh, and, and we know what we're doing. I mean, we, we've done it 54 times now. We know our cost of construction. We know the good contractors. We know the good suppliers. Uh, and, and so this is a, this is a well thought out, well tested, uh, you know, proof of concept already in place. I mean, for the last six years, seven years now, I guess we, we've been, you know, delivering these, these condos and operating them as the Grand Bayman Gardens. Um, but this opportunity, and I, I don't think I'm getting ahead of myself on this, and if I am, Rachel can, can slap me, but, um, you know, we, uh, you know we, we, we believe in, we're a professional company. I, I, let me just say that I don't dive, I don't surf, um, I go snorkeling maybe, you know, once a year because I'm with a group of people that want to go snorkeling. Um, you know, warm weather, ocean kinds of activities are not my hobbies. I, I grew up in Northwest Pennsylvania. I like to snow ski. I like to hunt. I like to fish. Um, I like the cold weather. And, and, and quite honestly, the tropics don't do it for me from a, a personal lifestyle standpoint. I, I enjoy being there, of course. Who, who doesn't like being on a Caribbean island, you know, a few, few weeks a year. Um, but for me, it's not about lifestyle. For me, Grand Pacifica, Grand Bayman, Grand Caribbean, uh, our projects in Panama, these have all been opportunities to serve consumers with a product uh, that's a very, very good fit for them. Uh, and, and, and one of the things that we've, we've just taken to heart over the you know, two and a half decades that we've been working um, is that there are lots of expensive, luxury, sexy products, and, and we're building one of them. The, the Marriott on the water three blocks away um, is a very sexy, expensive product. If, if you've got four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 that you want to invest uh, in, a, in a property overseas, that, that's probably a pretty good one to, to look at. Um, but, but we also understand there are a whole lot more people that have you know, somewhere between fifty dollars and $150,000 to invest in a property overseas either as a vacation property, maybe it's a property that you're looking at uh, to rent uh, when you're not there, use it as a vacation property for you know, 10, 15 years, and then have an eye on possibly moving there part or full time at some point in the future because you, you do like the tropical you know, Caribbean lifestyle experience and, 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 and that's someplace you wanna go someday. Um, so, so we understand that, that, that this is a very desirable uh, uh, lifestyle for, for many people. Um, but it's just not for me. And, and then that really is a big plus 
for you, the consumer. Uh, uh, because for me, it's all about business. It, it's all about delivering a high quality product uh, that meets North American standards uh, to a North American consumer uh, and, and, and then hiring professionals internally. Uh, Rachel and her team are phenomenal. We have a wonderful operations team. Um, but in this case, you know, the, 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 the operating of a resort, just like our Marriott on the water will be operated by a, by a professional operating company. Um, we, we've grown our, you know, small little Bayman Gardens to 54 units. We're going to add uh, 12 more. I think four of the 12 are already spoken for. Um, and, and, and we're really getting to the point now where we need professional management of the operating part of that business to really reach its full potential. And, uh, and, and so we've signed our contracts with Best Western. Uh, this is official. We have not officially announced it. That will happen next Wednesday. The folks from Best Western are coming in from Mexico. Uh, our team, I'm flying down on Monday. A bunch of folks are flying in tomorrow and over the weekend uh, for this big announcement. Uh, and what that means for you as, a, as an investor in the project is that you're going to get Best Western's reservation system, which is huge. Uh, I think they're the seventh or seven, maybe, correct. Seventh, is that right? Largest seventh, seventh largest hotel chain in the world. They've got a powerful, powerful reservation system uh, that, that puts heads on beds. And, and that's really, when we're talking about investment product that's, uh, you know, that's nightly rentals, it's, it's heads on beds, right? But then it's also how do you operate? How do you run efficiently? Uh, and keep the costs down. Well, a company like Best Western, you know, has been doing it for, you know, for many decades. They know how to do it. They're very, very good at it. And so uh, uh, with this announcement, we will be branding our Bayman Gardens properties, uh, Best Western, and we're opening up the next building, which is our fleet building. Uh, and you can see on the chart right here, the studios start at 83.9. Uh, and I think all in, Rachel, what's that number? You know, about with 90, the, about 96, it's, it's 96. under a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Right. There's, so thank you. So for, for just under a hundred thousand dollars, all in furniture and closing costs, you can have a studio unit in a best Western uh, that's going to do very, very well for you. And if, if you're looking for something that you might want to use later, a two bedroom or a three bedroom property would also be available as well. Um, you know, once we, once we have the announcement, the prices go up significantly. Once we begin construction, uh, the prices go up again. Um, so Rachel, if you'll flip forward, I just want to take a couple minutes and, and talk about the, uh, sure. you know, the return on investment. Um, let, me, let me mention one more point here as yeah, well, because, sure. uh, you know, I know it's easy to look at the chart and say here, all right, the branding announcement is coming and then March 18th, next Wednesday comes and then March 19th, you're looking back at the numbers and you're saying, you know, I really should have reserved. I want to get in at the 83, nine, uh, you know, if we've, if you've been following us since the Marriott announcement that we are not able to go back to the prices that we're offering now, which is why we're having this webinar and what, which is why we're informing you of the March 18th date. Um, but we'll talk more about what that really means to you. But, but, but do note that come March 18th, where it says branding announcement, this column here, these, these numbers will be in effect. Right. And, and that's next Wednesday. Um, yeah, so correct. you guys, mm -hmm. right. And so, so the folks that are on this webinar are absolutely, you know, smart and wise to be here tonight. Um, and you've got plenty of time to, you know, get the information from Rachel and her team. If this is something you want to do, uh, you know, you can make a reservation. Uh, and then what do we, what do we do, Rachel? It's 30 days to come visit if you want to come put boots on the ground and it's a fully refundable deposit. So you're not, you're, you're at risk for nothing by reserving. Um, and then you've got 30 days to come down and, and decide if you want to move ahead or not. So, um, you know, you, again, you, you guys are fortunate to be on this webinar to have the opportunity to to get them for about $15,000 less than what people in the end of next week are going to pay uh, to, to have the same condo. Um, you know, the, the uh, I, I like to look at, again, this is, um, now this is an after, isn't it? Exactly, yep, this is after. So the this ROI chart that we have here on the screen is for the 98.6 price, that's after the branding announcement on March 18th. And, and the reason we have this one is here is because the numbers that we've received uh, in order to make this chart are the most accurate, where some of you may have received the numbers before based on what we're doing at Grand Bayman, based on those percentages, but the percentages that we have on this chart that I'd be happy to send anybody who wants to see it is indeed based on the increased price, but you'll see that the numbers are, are really just as favorable. So if you're able to get in on the 83 at nine that you saw on the previous slide, then you 
can do a lot better than, than the percentages you see here. But that yeah. the number includes the closing cost, 8% closing cost in Belize, which is standard, and then the furniture, the standard furniture package as well. Right. So this is an all-in price of 111000 So if, if somebody reserves now, they're going to get it for under 100 So the ROIs will be better than this. Yes. Um, but a couple of things I want to point out, and, and, and Rachel, you've got very complex spreadsheets that show <laughs> how this all comes together and the occupancies and the ADRs. Um, but I want to look at one scenario. I want to look at the, uh, I, again, you, you heard me, I hope heard me, I'm going to say it again. We are a very conservative company. I want to look at the year one ROI conservative case. And Rachel, you'll have to help me with some of the numbers. Um, I'm pretty sure that the uh, well, t tell us what the sure. uh, average daily rate and occupancy calculations to drive a 7% return are. Sure. So that's at about 53% occupancy, which is the current average island, which is what we're seeing on Aaron Burgers Key today. Okay. Okay, so hold, hold tight one second. Mm -hmm. So on the conservative case, it's 53% occupancy, which is the island average. And, and so now we're talking about going from all the mom and pop hotels on the island and one Hilton, right? There's one Hilton and everything else is mom and pop. And the island average is 53%. And that's the occupancy rate that we've used here. Exactly. And then the average daily rate is about $113. So 53% occupancy, $113 on an average daily rate. rate. And I hope everyone on the call would agree that $113 a night for you know, a, a, a one bedroom condo, three blocks from the water on a Caribbean island is, is probably a pretty conservative number. Um, again, these numbers are coming out of the Belize Tourist Board for averages on the island for three star properties. So, uh, and in fact, we have a, I don't know how many pages Manuel Knight's feasibility study is. So when we, uh, when we uh, started working on the Marriott project, we actually hired a, 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 a well, uh, there have been three feasibility studies done, three uh, business feasibility studies. One was actually done by Marriott, and they studied the market to see if a Marriott hotel would work. Then one was, was done by the operating company, uh, and then one was required by the lenders on the Marriott project. And, and the one that was required by the Marriott, we hired a company out of uh, Northern Virginia, uh, Manuel Knight, and, and he came in and did it. And we are, we are allowed to provide that business feasibility study to you. Uh, and we will provide it to you. Um, so looking at all of the you know, uh, aggregate data from the island of Ambergris Key, uh, it's, yeah, again, this, the 53% is the current island average for occupancy, $113 per night for the three-star product. And so just, you oh, and then, and then let's talk about costs. I mean, again, the spreadsheets that, that Rachel and her team have put together li list all of these out. But I just want to be very clear that a lot of times, you know, a lot of things aren't included, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, but we've included everything, the furniture, the closing costs. But then on the cost side of thing, we've, we've put in the utilities. We've put in the homeowner's fees. We've put in the annual, uh, you know, catastrophic insurance policies. Um, what else, Rachel? I know we've, oh, we put in a furniture replacement in year yeah, seven. seven. Seven, I think we yep. put in, and we put in a thousand dollars a year for, uh, for just general maintenance. I mean, something breaks, you got to paint the unit, blah 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 blah. We put in a thousand dollars a year for maintenance, uh, starting in year three, and so we've. But again, we've been operating these units now for for we're in our seventh year of operation, and so we know we have real hard data what it costs to operate these, these uh, these these condominium units, and so. Uh, we've taken that data, we've plugged it in, we ask you to please look at the spreadsheets, look at the data. I, I'm sure you're going to agree that we've been very, very uh, generous with the costs and we've been pretty conservative with the projections. Um, and if you look at the, if you look at the 10 year ROI, um, and Rachel, I don't know if you know those numbers off the top of your head, but the ADR goes up and the occupancy does what? Just to Oh gosh, I don't I don't remember those off the top of my head and I don't have the chart in front of me. So I don't want to give anyone those those wrong numbers, but what you can do is is send us an email if you'd like to get a copy of it. I think all, all of you have our email address because you got the link to this webinar, but info I N F O at grandbayman.com, G-R-A-N-D, 
B-A-Y-M-E-N. You see that in the corner there, info at grandbayman.com, or just email us uh, back to the email that, that you've received from us. Well, but we hey, can... Rachel, I'm a, little, I'm, a, I'm a little bit braver than you are in something like this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> People are going <laughs> to <hold your, laughs> <laughs> hold your feet to the fire. I, I'm just going to cry. Uh, I didn't know. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you what I, I think I remember. I think I remember that we took the occupancy up uh, 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 to 63% over the, the period, over 10 years, because again, 53% is the island average. We think that a Best Western branded product that's got the seventh biggest hotel chain in the world promoting it, and when people look online, hey, do I, where do I wanna stay when I go to Ambergris Key? Oh, you know, Mike Cobb's hotel, well, who's Mike Cobb or the Best Western? I think I'm gonna pick the Best Western, right? So occupancy should go up, and historically in properties that have become branded by Best Western, including a property in Belize on the mainland uh, that was branded Best Western. They saw, saw both their occupancies go up and their average daily rates, their ADRs. And I think we ramped the ADR up to like 135, from 113 to 135 over a 10-year period. So again, we're not we're not talking about big, huge increases in occupancy or ADR over the next 10 years. But the really cool thing is, is because once your costs are covered, most of the money that in, is incremental and it drops to the bottom line. So your ROI actually almost doubles. Well, it more than doubles actually. It goes from seven to 15. So as a longer term hold, uh, th this, this really is a great investment. And then if you flip flop it and work it backwards and you say, well, I'm willing to pay you know, $100,000 to get a 7% yield, what would somebody be willing to pay to get a 15% yield? right? Well, I mean, if they paid 200, they'd still have their 7%, right? So there's an inverse relationship to the value of the condo to the cash flow it kicks off. Um, again, that's the conservative case. The industry standard case, that's coming right out of Manuel Knight's feasibility studies. We'll provide it to you, look at it. I think the numbers are going to be somewhere in between these two is my guess. Um, and that's pretty strong. Um, so I, I really... Uh, uh, I, I'm excited about this. I know the folks that picked up the first four units are very, very excited about it. Um, and, uh, uh, and I hope some of you will decide to uh, make a reservation. Again, fully refundable. Um, if you come down in the next 30 days and you don't like it, we give you your money back and, and then we, you know, we'll, we'll buy, you, buy you dinner and a drink and thank you for coming to see us. But um, I'm pretty sure that when you get down there, you're going to be awfully glad you went ahead and, and, and did this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Rachel, I think you got one more slide and then I'm going to I'm going to scoot off and let you kind of wade into it a little bit. But um, I, I just want to, I, I alluded to this earlier, and I think it's really important for people to hear this. My very first trip to Belize was in 1994. And it was in the fall of 94. Uh, and, and over the you know, high season of 94, 95, uh, sometime in early 95, uh, I, I bought a condo in Belize. And I was do the math on that. I was around 30, maybe 31, something like that. I don't remember. Anyway, but I was 30 or 31 years old. I owned no rental properties anywhere in the world. And my very first rental property was in Belize. I bought a condo in Belize, started ECI, uh, Exotic Key International is what it stands for. I started Exotic Key International in 1996 to basically you know, rent my condo. And there was no such thing as Airbnb. So we put ads in the Washington Post and, you know, classified ads and whatever. And we, we started renting our condos. Um, you know, there were sand streets. The streets were sand. Um, th th there, th there were, I don't know, 20 restaurants on the island. Um, you know, maybe, maybe 20 hotels on the island. And it was mostly men. It was, it was serious fishermen and serious, you know, boys dive trips. There were very few women and, and almost no families on the island. And, you know, over the, the last 25 years, uh, you know, the, the, some of the streets have been paved. There's still some dirt streets, but, but a lot of the main roads are now paved. Um, we have a Hilton. We have, uh, we have two Marriott's. We have one Marriott Autograph, which is under construction. We have our Marriott, which is in development. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, Hyatt property. Uh, there's a Wyndham property. So uh, the, the island over the last 25 years has really, really started to get legs and run. Uh, but the good news is, is that 
you know, it, it, it's still nowhere close to the pricing uh, or, or popularity or, or, um, or development of, of a place like the Cayman Islands or the Turks and Caicos or the uh, British Virgin Islands, right? I mean, all of these places, similar products would be double or triple the price. Um, and so you're still getting in at a very, very opportune time in Belize. In fact, I like to call it the sweet spot because it's popular enough to cash flow. It's popular enough to see these brands starting to come out and be, you know, be willing to come to the island because they're not coming until there's popularity. They're not coming until there's volume of travelers. And I think it was about three years ago, Southwest Airlines opened up and that was a real bellwether of change because it, I mean, when I first went there, there were two airlines that went to well, three. There was Taka, there was uh, Continental, and American. That's it. You had three choices to get there, and 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 now there are, I don't know six, seven airlines that fly in on a on a daily basis, and 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 so uh, the, 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 it's just changed so much. But it, it but we're right at this cusp of what I would call popularity change, where you've got the brands coming in, and this is an opportunity to own a studio unit for under a hundred. By the way. If you like to leverage, you can borrow half the money. Like you can do 50% loan to value. And I don't remember what those ROIs are, but on cash on cash, that's pretty strong too. So Rachel can certainly send you the, you know, uh, put half down, put 50 down and borrow 50. Uh, what those numbers look like, um, they're pretty strong too. And, and if you had 100 in your pocket and you said, I like this, you know, this opportunity, maybe you, maybe you buy two and, and finance them. Um, Really, it, the, the folks, the, the eight folks who take advantage of the last eight residential units in this building are going to be very, very happy they did it. Um, you guys are fortunate to be on this call tonight. Um, I've probably said enough. I'm excited about it, obviously. I'm headed down to Belize on Monday. Uh, looking forward to being with the uh, Best Western guys on Wednesday uh, doing this big brand announcement. But um, please, if this is something that make sense, get the information from Rachel, look at it, you know, over the next few days, Monday, Tuesday, you know, tell her you want to send a reservation, deposit in and, and figure out how to come down in the next 30 days and see us. But um, Rachel, thanks for having me on tonight. Um, I'm going to slip off and uh, go into a dinner meeting now, but, uh, um, <laughs> but, I, but, but I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Well, you know, thank you for joining us. There are not many developers, you know, if any here on the island who've been here since the early nineties. So it's neat to have your perspective. You've seen the growth over the past 25, 26 years. And, uh, you know, obviously you're still here. So you still believe in the island and, and the growth and the progression. So, uh, so uh, thank you. Ever. Yeah. More so than ever. All right. Well, have fun tonight, team, and, uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing some of y'all down in Belize here in the next few weeks, uh, checking it out and, um, yeah, saying yes. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Have a great dinner meeting. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. So for everybody who's still on the line with us, we are going to run through some of the Belize stats. I see a lot of familiar names on here who've been to the island before or have been to Belize. So we're not going to spend too much time here, but I'm guessing that you're looking at Belize, that Belize intrigues you for one or maybe many of the reasons that you see here on the screen. It's easy enough to get to from North America. Here's a big one is that English is indeed the official language. So it makes doing business, integrating into the community just personal life and, and professional life much, much easier from the perspective of being able to speak English. Uh, we are a former British colony, so we do have the common law, the English common law that's implemented. And as Mike mentioned, uh, we are seeing that there's a for affordable Caribbean real estate here and of course, increasing tourism. Now, when we're looking at places as a company to, to develop and to own real estate, we like to see where the people are going. And what we've seen here in Belize over the past five years is that more and more direct flights are coming into the country. A lot more of these mainstream travelers have an interest in coming to Belize, whereas Mike mentioned before, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, it was really adventure travelers, people who stayed in mom and pop type places. Maybe they had electricity at night, maybe they didn't, but they were really here to dive and fish. We're seeing that, that transgression now. We're seeing a transformation from the adventure traveler to the mainstream traveler. And as a result, we are seeing more and more direct flights coming in to the country, which is huge. And of course, if you're looking for an investment, you really want to follow the trends. You want to see where the people are going. We've seen increased airlift. We've seen more direct flights coming. 
We've seen high numbers of tourism, as you saw on the previous screen, and we see that the big hotel brands are arriving. Yes, as Mike mentioned before, we are working with Marriott on the beachfront property. Now a Best Western, it'll be the first Best Western on the island, the second in the country, the other one is in Belize City. So a lot of great opportunity to develop relationships and co-marketing. Now, in addition to that, Ambergris Key, this little island that you see up here on the top right part of the screen is called Ambergris Key. San Pedro is the primary town. Sometimes people refer to Ambergris Key as San Pedro. San Pedro is the primary town, though, on the southern part of the island. Uh, produces about 70% of the tourism revenue in the entire country of Belize. And we're seeing a lot of people are coming out here because they like to be in the water. They like the diving and the snorkeling and the fishing and just lying out by the pool and lounging around or uh, just being able to jump in a golf cart and check out different restaurants and different locations on the island. And it's certainly a place where people keep returning to as well because of the people, the lifestyle, their opportunities that they have here. Now, I mentioned to you San Pedro is the town on Ambergris Key. Many times you'll hear people say San Pedro when they refer to Ambergris Key and Ambergris Key if they're referring specifically to the town. But San Pedro really is the heart of this island. The island is about 25, 26 miles long, but everything truly is centered around this central location of San Pedro town. This is where you find the restaurants and the bars and the nightlife and the live music and the the tourist shops and the galleries and the, the bars, if I didn't mention that before, but this is really where you want to be if you're coming. And what we're finding is that this is really the right opportunity, the right place at the right time. Here's a picture from the 80s of the airship. If you've been to Ambergris Key before, you may recognize this. This little blue house is what is now Tropic Air, uh, which is the one of the primary uh, air carriers here in Belize. Uh, this is from the 70s. At this point, there was no airstrip. This is where the airstrip would have been on the top part of, uh, of, of the picture here. But you can see, obviously, that that's grown quite a bit. There's been a tremendous amount of sustainable growth on the island because people want to come. People want to live here. People want to spend time in a relaxing place in the Caribbean. So just from these pictures alone, you can see there's been a tremendous amount of growth. But we're seeing people are coming because they like the comfort of it. They like feeling like they are able to hop in their golf cart and go anywhere. This is not a Punta Cana. This is not a Cancun where they tell you to stay in your resort and from the hours of six to six, not leave. This is a place where you are encouraged to go out and support the locals and try different restaurants and explore the island. It really is a colorful, colorful Caribbean island very charming as well. And yes, golf cart is our primary mode of transportation. But we're seeing now that the big brands are starting to come here to Ambergris Key. Uh, the other brands that we have in the country are in Belize City. They're primarily business hotels. But we're seeing the vacation hotels, all the branded vacation hotels are on the keys. They're on Ambergris Key. Uh, Blackador Key, which is a private island owned by Leonardo DiCaprio, um, is just right around the corner from us. In addition to that, there is another private island, Key Chapel, which has been announced as a Four Seasons. So a lot of opportunity here in this part of Belize. So when we get to the Bayman Gardens, this is the neighborhood we're going to talk about specifically. We are located about a 10-minute beach walk. I say 7 to 10-minute beach walk from the downtown San Pedro area. We are located, though, in San Pedro town proper. So even though we're not in, in the, the heart of the downtown area, we are still in San Pedro where there's quite a bit around us. And of course, if anybody wants the Google Maps link, I'm happy to give that to you. But just from this sheet here, you can see that there's quite a bit around many different restaurants, hardware stores, supermarkets, bars, banking centers, golf cart rentals, uh, fruit stands, the pharmacy and clinic, a lot right here. So Graham Bayman Gardens was not designed to be a luxury five-star product. It was designed to serve those who are coming to Belize, whether to live full-time or looking for a rental, but don't necessarily want to pay the beachfront premiums. They understand they're just a few blocks from the beach. You can see here, Grand Bayman Gardens, right down the street. It's about a five-minute walk, and then you're at the Caribbean Sea. So you're not paying those beachfront premiums, but you have very, very close access to the water. 
And personally, I live here at Grand Bayman, uh, purchased in 2016, that was initially planning to put my condo in the rental market, ended up moving in, but my plan now with the Best Western is to relocate, uh, fix up my current condo for Best Western standards, and then get that into the rental program. Huge, huge opportunity with having a branded hotel in the gardens. And, and you know, as you, if you come to Ambergris or if you've been here before, you'll see that there are many developments going up. Most of them are luxury beachfront projects. So we really fill a unique hole in the market, whereas many people are trying to capture this luxury market. We understand there's a type of traveler who wants to spend $100 to $150 a night, would rather spend their money in, their water, in the water or on excursions or dining out, and they're very comfortable with uh, a Best Western, and that is where they will ultimately stay. So close to town, really close to the water, and they have everything around within walking distance. So the fleet building, you'll see it here on the right-hand side of the screen, is one of uh, is the, the next building that we're going to be building. It's pre-construction. We have, at this point, four buildings that are up. Anchor, A, C, Captain, D, Dolphin, E, Explorer. All of these will go into the rental system as well, unless the owner is living in it and decides that they do not want to be in the rental system. That's up to the owner. Uh, and that's true for the fleet as well. You may decide that you wanna put in the rental market and then five years later say, you know what, I wanna move in at this point, let me take it out of the rental program. You are able to do that, there is that flexibility. So at this point we have 54 condos that are up operating. Uh, all of them are for private, are privately owned at this point. There are a couple available for resales, but at this point they are all individually owned. So the fleet building was really designed with you and with the renter in mind. And what we did over the, the past couple of years is really understand what it is that our consumer is looking for. So there are a few fleet benefits that you'll find with this building. Uh, it's at an ideal location on the property. And let me go back for a moment. So it's located on the northern part of the property here, and it looks down the future gardens views. So uh, if you're on the, the third and fourth floor, you'll be able to have views of the sunset. Sunset happens about right over here and then also bay views as well. Uh, do note that we parallel the airstrip for the small, the small Cessna caravans that come in. Uh, they only run during daylight hours, so uh, don't have to worry about your sleep getting disturbed, but it's quite neat from uh, the balconies to be able to watch the, the Cessnas coming in with the sunset and the bay there in the background. And here is a picture from the Explorer building, the third floor. You look right out and you see the water, you see the sunset right there. So from the third and fourth floor, you will be able to have very similar views in the fleet. Uh, so do bear that in mind as you're choosing what condo makes the most sense for you. Uh, also in addition, because it is four floors, there is an elevator. And then of course you have the branded hotel benefits. Mike talked about this before, working with the seventh largest hotel chain in the world gives you access uh, to their database, to their reservation system, which, uh, which, which means more rentals and, and a higher occupancy. So you may have read about the studio units. The studio condos at the fleet building were really designed for this nightly rental market, but also the owner was considered as we were putting together the floor plans. And what I mean by that is that there is an owner lockout closet. I had a, a couple who came in today and they're like, oh, what is the lockout closet? What that means is you can store your items in there and then when you're not here in Belize, you lock it up and then the guests are not able to access it. So typically what people put in the lockout are towels or linens or scuba gear or snorkel items. Uh, you just lock it up and leave it and when you're not here, you are able to not let anybody in. But in addition to that, there are connecting doors to the neighboring studios. Uh, we have a couple of floors that have adjoining two bedrooms, uh, and then the two bedroom would link up to the studio for a three bedroom option. Now, in addition to that, it may not have a full kitchen, but it does have a kitchenette, so it'll have the microwave, another sink, a, a mini fridge, coffee pot, things that you consider when you're staying at a hotel. Uh, in addition to that, it has a large balcony. And these balconies, I think, are going to be spectacular. They are going to look down the property line, so you have the gardens views there. And then again, from that third and fourth floor, you do have views of the bay and then also the sunset. I had somebody who messaged before about the condo owner's fees. Uh, for the studios, they really are quite affordable. It's $150 a month plus the taxes. And I don't have this written down, but if you have a pen and paper handy, uh, just jot this down. I'll let you know what's included in the COA. 
Otherwise, just send us an email here and I can get you that info, info at grandbayman.com. But included in the COA is a cable. In addition to that, there's internet, upkeep of the exterior part of the building, uh, landscaping, the current maintenance of the landscaping, future landscaping. In addition to that, you have access to the amenities at Grand Bayman, so the, the San Pedro Fitness Club, which includes a pool, tennis court, and fitness club. And in addition to that, it includes a reserve fund. So it's quite a comprehensive COA, uh, and, but it is really, really reasonable at $150 a month plus the 12.5% general sales tax. Now, Mike mentioned this earlier, but there is 50% financing available. If you'd like more information about those terms, just send us an email. But 50% of this $83,900. When you look at the all in numbers, so if we're here at the top, $83,900 plus closing costs and furniture, turnkey, it's a little bit more than $96,000. But you are able to finance half of that $83,900. So it gives you flexibility there too. Uh, we ran the numbers. It is uh, cash flow positive. If we're in the, um, the, the conservative case, you're still at about 9.1% ROI. If we're looking at that best case before the, the industry standard for the Best Western, you're at about 15.9% ROI. But again, happy to go through that with you more one-on-one -on -one depending on, on what your case may be. Now, within the, within the fleet building, there are four floors in total. We have two two-bedrooms, and one of them got reserved today. So we have one more two-bedroom, and then we have 10 studios. And right now, we have two studios that are currently reserved. So two studios reserved and one two bedroom. So if you're interested in a larger space, maybe it's a two or three bedroom, do talk to us as soon as you can so that we can go through what those options look like with you. And here's just a general layout. This is four studios per floor. And like we talked about a little bit earlier here, you have the connecting door between the condos. So if you're coming down and you own this condo right over here, if you can follow the cursor on the left-hand side, you have friends who are coming down, they can rent the condo next to you. You have that connecting door between and you're able to still have that shared space, go out on the balcony, enjoy a beverage together, watch the sunset. Uh, really, really great opportunity there. Uh, in addition to that, we talked about the elevator. There will be an elevator for convenience sake as well. At this point, the fourth floor is sold out. Uh, so if anybody's interested in being on the higher floors, the third is your next best bet. Uh, if you're also interested though in what rents the best, the first floor for convenience, always the first floor for convenience and the upper floor. So the third and fourth floor. Second floor is kind of at a weird point, but uh, you know, if somebody has it available, they are going to stay there as well because some people don't like the first floor, the top floors, but again, it just depends entirely on what it is that they're looking for. So when we looked at the floor plans, we just really understood what it was that people were looking for, having spacious closets, having nice balconies, and having amenities already in place were huge. The connecting doors between the two condos for added opportunity for rental. In addition, in the two bedroom, there is a washer dryer hookup and then the owner lockout closet. You'll find that in both the studios and the two bedrooms. It gives you the opportunity to leave your personal items here when you are not in town. So how do you get started? There is a refundable $999 deposit. And so what that does is you go through the floor plan, you decide you want unit 301, you will send us the reservation paperwork, you'll send us the deposit, and then that locks you in. And uh, we are giving you 30 days to come down, see the property. Um, some folks don't, don't even see the property or they've been here before, so they don't need to come down. But 30 days later, we'll send you the paperwork. You'll receive the final paperwork. And from there, you have seven days to decide if you want to move forward or not. If you don't, we will refund you the deposit. Now, this is a question I get asked quite a bit. Um, what does the, the payment schedule look like? So the first one is the deposit. The next one is 50% less the deposit and the furniture, and that's due 30 days prior to breaking ground. And that is, uh, we're planning to break ground in July of this year. It'll be about a 10 to 12 month build period, but breaking ground in July. And so the 50% less the deposit plus the furniture would be due in June, beginning of June. 40% is due when the roof is on the building. That's typically six to eight months into construction. So if we begin in July, then you're looking at about February, March for that 40%. And then the final 10% when the keys are handed over, so that'll be June, July of next year, and the closing costs are due then as well. If you're financing, you are able to finance 50%. We'll introduce you to the bankers. It is with an international bank here on the island. 
Uh, interest is 6.9%. Uh, I know it's higher than what we're used to in the States. It's a lot better though than what we typically see here on the island for foreigners, which is usually 10 to 12%. So 6.9% is pretty darn good, but we can send you those calculations and you can take a look at what those numbers look like. But if you're financing, then the payment schedule varies just a little bit, but so the deposit, the 50% less the deposit. So this payment would be due in June. And then the next payment would be the financed portion. And that would be a 50%, that total this year, 50% plus the 10% uh, would be due when the roof is on the building. So again, six to eight months into construction. Um, this is just a very general overview. I know everybody has different scenarios. Everybody's looking at something different. So uh, we can certainly talk more about what your specific situation is and really find out what the best solution is for you. So we invite you to join the Grand Bayman family. Uh, we first started on the island, as Mike mentioned, in 1998. Grand Bayman, our first building, was constructed in 2013. Over the years, uh, we have developed 54 condos uh, that range from one bedroom and two bedrooms currently there. And so this will be the introduction of studios to the Grand Bayman community which we're really, really excited about. But uh, we really do hope you decide to join the family. We have a great group of forward-thinking, like-minded individuals. We do have opening celebrations when the building is complete for you to come down, get to know who your neighbors are, and of course, explore the island a little bit more. So I invite you to be one of the eight people left who's gonna get the most profit from this opportunity. And the reason I say that, you saw the numbers before, there's gonna be a substantial price hike once we reach March 18th, if you send us a text or email on March 19th and ask for the, the pre-branding prices, we are not able to give it to you at that point. So be forward thinking. You can put down that $999 deposit, have 30 days uh, to come down. If you don't want to come down, you can at least look at the paperwork over that time period and then decide what makes, most this, makes the most sense for you. But for brand new construction in a branded hotel on one of the most popular islands, um, in the region. This is, this is really an incredible opportunity. And I'm so happy to see so many of you who are seriously interested and, and seriously looking to become a part of this. Now I'm going to go through some of the questions here. Uh, and if we don't get to everybody, we will have our team reach out to you over the next day to get those questions answered for you so that, uh, we're at least able to, uh, to, to, to talk with you and learn a little bit more about what you're looking for. All right, so this is a really good question from Tim C. So Tim is planning to live in Belize from October 1st to March 31st. What is the occupancy rate between April 1st and, and September 30th? Tim, that's a really great question. We are definitely a location that has higher occupancy during the winter months. We have what we call a high season here. High season is middle of November to middle of May, and that's when you see a bulk of the rentals coming in. Because you think about it, people are coming from up north where it's colder, they wanna come down to a tropical climate. So that is really prime time, that is peak season here. So if you're planning to come down during peak season, you're gonna see not as great of an ROI if you're planning to just rent it during what we call low season. Low season is the opposite. It's middle of May to middle of November. So uh, what I really challenge you to do is think about if you're looking at this property from an investment perspective or from a lifestyle perspective. And for many of us, we want the best of both worlds. We want to be able to generate positive cash flow. We want to pay for itself, hopefully make a profit from it, but also use it in the best time of year. Um, so just really think about that. What is your primary goal? Is, is cash flow your primary goal or is living in the tropics during the winter month? Because I can tell you if you're down here during peak season, peak time, you're probably not going to get the sort of ROI that you are hoping for. And that leads me to answer another question that James started to ask is what are the rules for personal use and the rental program? Uh, there are going to be owner usage restrictions if you plan to have it in the Best Western Rental Program. And that's very standard for branded hotels. Um, I'm gonna give you, I'll have a more exact answer for you tomorrow, uh, but it is gonna be quite favorable for the owners. Um, but if you're planning to come down, for example, six months during peak season, it probably won't seem too, too favorable to you. But what you're able to do is not put it in the rental program. So if you realize that you're really just looking at this from a lifestyle perspective, uh, you know that your condo is going to be kept up to great standards through the management company when you're not here, even if you're not renting it, uh, then 
this could be a great opportunity for you. But you either don't put it in the rental program, or if you put it in the rental program, it has to be through Best Western and there will be some owner usage restrictions. But I'll have those answers for you uh, more definitively tomorrow so that, um, so that there are no question marks as you're completing the reservation paperwork. <laughs> JD, thank you for the matcha tea supply. JD supplies my matcha tea and I still have about half a container left here um, in the office and it, it does get shared around. So thank you, JD, for that. Uh, the other question that I see here, let me just go back. The other question, another question, will there be any beach access uh, to available resorts? You know, here, you know, it's a very interesting phenomenon here on the island. If you are staying at an off-water property, typically you're able to use the pools at the other locations as long as you buy a beverage or some food from the restaurant or bar that they have there. So they're not necessarily going to be an exclusive right to resort XYZ for their beach or for their pools, but as long as you're, you're buying something from them, they typically don't say anything to you or you have that right to use it. In addition to that, there's Secret Beach, which is up north, um, and that's a great daytime activity. You hop in the golf cart, go to Secret Beach. There are tons of uh, beach bars and restaurants up there with really beautiful beaches that you're able to go in and enjoy as well. Krista, great question. Will the HOA change once Best Western takes over? No. Uh, at this point, it will not change. HOA fees are based on what the cost is to maintain the property. And uh, that will not change once Best Western comes. And for people who own in the A, C, D, E buildings, for them to join the Best Western rentals, there's gonna, there are going to be some upgrades for them to have to make to their condo. But all of those sort of considerations will be factored in to the new construction. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, Mike, Michael C. asks, is the bed a Murphy? Uh, it's not a Murphy bed. It is going to be an actual queen bed. A daytime seating, I would recommend sitting out on the balcony. Weather's quite nice here. Uh, other than that, <laughs> another is not it's, not, it's not a Murphy bed. Uh, another Tim, another great question, HOA. So HOA fees, um, within the bylaws, you'll see there's a statement that HOA fees cannot increase more than 10% per year um, unless it's voted on otherwise by the HOA. At this point, we've been in operation since 2013. There's been one adjustment over that seven year period. But what we do, this is a COA, Condo Owners Association or Homeowners Association money is belonging to the COA. So we don't increase prices unless we have to. Maybe security prices go up or maybe the cost to maintain the landscaping increases and there's some adjustments. But other than that, it is, it is money that belongs to the Homeowners Association and it is looked at regularly to see what those actual costs are. Uh, JD, what size is the two bedroom? Good question. The two bedroom is 875 square feet plus balcony space. Um, so it is quite a nice size two bedroom and it's also two bathroom. And then what we can do, I'm seeing a lot of people asking questions about the management fees and rental percentages. And what we'll do, if you would like a copy of the, the performa that we had in the beginning part of the presentation, just email us here, info at grandbayman.com, info at grandbayman.com, and we will get that information to you. Uh, I saw there was somebody here who was looking for a little bit more information. Just, of course, email that email address there, and we will get those details to you. Um, I see some people are more interested in the two bedrooms, some in the studios. Um, I'm not going to know that unless you send us a message, so please make sure you're reaching out to us. We are here to assist you. Uh, my team in here, and I live here full time on Ambergris Key. It's been a phenomenal experience. And if you're planning on coming down uh, and visiting us anytime soon, let us know because we'd be happy to show you around and let you experience Ambergris Key. All right, with that, everybody, I'm going to say good night. Have a really, really great evening. Be in touch with the questions that are on your mind. Again, March 18th is the day that we're going to be doing the branding announcement. If you're going to be here in Belize, I know a few folks mentioned they will be fantastic. You're more than welcome to join us. Just let me know. Um, for those who aren't going to be here, we are planning to live broadcast the announcement. If you're interested in seeing that, just send us a message for the details. All righty, everybody. Have a really phenomenal evening, and we are looking forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.